Today I'm going to show you guys how to use your smartphone as a Stream Deck. Even if you already have a Stream Deck. Even if you already have a Stream Deck XL. This is still pretty awesome. And if you don't have a Stream Deck and you want to be able to control things like your scenes, audio and video inputs, we're going to get you set up in under five minutes, have a nice pretty little stand for this thing right there in your little Stream Lab. Not Stream Labs OBS, but you know, your, your game room, your Stream Lab. Let's get this thing. So I don't know why more people aren't talking about this. They either don't know, or they're underestimating how awesome this feature actually is. Let's check it out. Alrighty guys, sharing my screen, I'm over here in Streamlabs OBS, which is my streaming platform of choice, streaming and video recording for YouTube footage and whatnot. So we're gonna come over here to settings, and down, and down here, you have this little logo down here. It might be hiding from you, it's a little sneaky peek. Remote control. Now I'm not gonna show you this QR code, because that lets you take control of my electronics goodies, and we can't have that. Not my goodies, not up in here. But when you reveal this code, you're going to scan it with your phone. And once you scan that QR code, you will be prompted to install this application, whether you're on iPhone or you are on Android. It's going to take you to this bad boy here. It's called Streamlabs Deck, and you're going to open that application up. You're going to log in with whatever platform you generally stream off of. Um, I stream to all three, however, the one that I use uh, Streamlabs OBS to log into is Twitch. And then once you do this, you're going to have control of your scenes in Streamlabs OBS, so you can transition uh, in between things like your intro and your game and your Be Right Back and stuff like that. And also in uh, control a couple of other things, which is pretty cool, especially if you don't have a Stream Deck and you do not want to use hotkeys on your keyboard, or if you're like me, you already have a Stream Deck, this basically makes it to where you can free up you know, eight to 10 buttons on your Stream Deck that you can now utilize on your phone. All right, as you boys can see, I'm over here in Streamlabs OBS right now. And of course you can use the Stream Deck to switch through scenes and stuff like that, uh, turn my webcam on and off. However, all these can now be controlled from my phone. As you see, it's instantaneous response. There is absolutely zero lag or input delay or anything like that. It just immediately works. Uh, which is super awesome, but that's not really where it ends. It's just switching scenes. So you can have it in landscape mode like this, or you can put it in portrait as well. Obviously that blocks part of my screen, so I'd probably move it uh, maybe over here where I can quickly have access to that over here. And as you see, there's a ton of tiles here, a ton of blocks, which means these are all functions, functionality that I can remove from my Stream Deck XL. And if you have the standard Stream Deck that has 15 keys, or especially the Stream Deck Mini, which has six keys, you are definitely going to want to not utilize all of those. Granted, you can make folders to... Granted, you can make folders, and in each folder you could have, like, all of your clips or all your transitions, sound effects in one. That's what I would do if I had a mini. But stream decks aren't cheap, and they're actually more expensive than usual right now because everyone's trying to stream right now, and, well, stream decks are freaking awesome. You most likely have a smartphone. It doesn't have to be a flagship phone. This is a two-and-a-half-year-old iPhone XR right here. Also, what's recording this video in 4K right now is also an iPhone XR. Sorry, camera. I know. I know you want to get used. You're my webcam. Chill out. Chill out. But besides being able to just switch screens and whatnot, I can also mute or unmute my desktop audio, which I don't know if you guys can see. I might zoom in post editing, but that's might still be a little bit small for you guys. But as I press this button, my desktop audio is getting mute and unmuted. And same thing with my mic. As you can see, I'm talking right now. Boom. I am now muted. That is super, super cool. And besides just being able to tap, you can also long press and then change the volume, which is super awesome. So you're you're a little bit hot on the mic, you're clipping, you're popping, you're a little too loud. You can turn that down. You can turn your game sound up. You can also start a video recording from here or go live. So if you want to stream or just screen record for a YouTube compilation or something, you can do that. And an additional function here, you can actually save a replay of the last 15 uh, or 30 seconds of your gameplay which is really, really cool. And then you can also enter studio mode. So if you're trying to do some uh, transitions and whatnot. Now, if you do have Prime, which is Streamlabs paid service, it's rather expensive, but it does have a ton of really cool tools, about 43 applications, including copyright free music, free, uh, themes and overlays, stuff like that. Uh, you do also get themes for this application as well, which is kind of nice, but you don't need that. That's more of just a, a nice little add-on to have here. But you can actually switch themes on the fly. So as you see now, I'm in my holiday theme that I usually run for about a month, month and a half around the holiday seasons and whatnot. Go back to my 
My regular uh, theme here, which is pretty cool, will go to the starting now screen. And if I want to skip that stinger transition, I can just double tap real quick like that, just like I would do on my stream deck um, to cut that stinger transition short if I just want to get right to the next screen. And then there's a settings over here where you can configure, where you can actually set this up exactly how you want, drag and drop tiles in the orientation that you want. But we're not done yet. You might think we are, but you'd be incorrect in it. Besides the remote tab, there's chat over here. Right now I'm just linked up with Twitch, but if I'm multi-streaming to Facebook and YouTube Live, which I generally do, um, I'll be able to monitor all of those chats. You just tap on the box and you'll be monitoring those streams there, as those chats as well. Same thing with the events tabs, that is basically your mini feed right here. So if somebody subs to you, follows, donates, tells you that you're the, the Grand Master Prime, you can thank them for their service there. Now, if it sounds like I'm a little bit excited about this feature, that's because I am. I think this is really awesome and the fact that this has been uh, in Streamlabs OBS for quite some time and I didn't know about it is crazy. Now, the application is free. Uh, like I said, the only thing that would be paid here would be the Prime. I would recommend getting some kind of a stand for this because if you just have your phone propped up or whatever, I mean, that works and all. Um, I'm in a case, so it shouldn't slide around too much. But something like this little stand here not only looks nice because it's metal and whatnot, looks good on your desk, but it also swivels. It's rubberized, so it locks your phone in there real good. I'm not sponsored by these guys or anything like that. But, but this particular stand will be linked in the description below. I think it's like $12, and like I said, it is metal, looks really sharp. And that, boys, is how you control your stream with your cell phone. Peace.